Hi, my name is Marco. I wanted to show some of the results with different printers and different resins. I think it's important to understand the benefits and the drawbacks depending on your machine or the resin that you choose. I would like to start with a, probably a, a very standard resin. This is from the Form Labs uh, Form 2 machine printed with Form uh, resin. This is the white resin. I think this is kind of a bad choice because the uh, color white tends to hide details. I know this wouldn't be a problem uh, for thermoforming uh, transparent aligners, but it is a problem if you want to verify the quality of your model. And in this case, the white might hide small details, small problems, that it would be better to see quickly once the model comes out of the print. Uh, I would just like to point out a very common mistake that I see when people want to 3D print uh, this kind of uh, dental models is that they do not do a correctly flat surface and they need to put support and that not only takes longer, consumes more material, but sometimes the angles are not uh, quite right and I think that uh, reduces the best possible quality that you can achieve with uh, the printer. So just uh, my two cents. With the same printer but with a different material, uh, this is the color uh, resin. I painted it uh, the peach color. Why peach color? Because it was for another project, uh, but it comes out perfect. It's uh, kind of similar to the, the Form Labs dental model resin, which is a little bit brownish maybe, but you can s immediately see it's much easier to identify uh, the small details that on the white resin might uh, go, no go unnoticed. This model was not only printed uh, flat, but it's also hollow, so it saves a lot of material. It's not my preferred option. I believe this is difficult to remove. Some of the resin uh, stays inside and then can drip out. And uh, it's not the best solution, but uh, it is a solution depending on your needs. If you really need to save money on resin, making them hollow and very thin might be a good option, but not too thin. For example, this is a model for some crowns uh, and here I went a bit too far and you can see how thin this part is. Uh, it was actually quite uh, surprised that it didn't break when I took it out of the print bed. It can take some effort. You have to sometimes uh, pry it out and that might uh, lead to breakage. So not so thin, but still it is hollow. Uh, saved lots of uh, material with this technique. Just want to show you, uh, this is how it's done. You grab the 3D printed model with the four of uh, the four material, this one's solid. It's a lot of material, and you put it in a, a small machine with uh, small pellets that allows the model to uh, snugly uh, fit and will remain solidly stable. When the a thin sheet of hot uh, plastic is placed over it, and pressure is applied from above and vacuum is applied from the bottom, so it will uh, perfectly capture all the details of the model. In this case, this one came badly. It was overheated, <coughs> uh, but it did uh, fit perfectly. And once it is um, cooled, you see it captures all the details, and then you simply cut it following uh, the teeth line, the gum line. And that's it, you remove it, and you have your 
clear aligner. This is for uh, orthodontics, uh, but there are some for preventing from uh, bruxism or, or biting when you're sleeping. Okay, with the same machine, you this is not really this color. This is the clear resin uh, from Form Labs, but because it's so difficult to see, even harder to see than with the white resin, I ended up uh, painting it a uh, dark gray. And see, immediately you can see some of the defects. This is probably from uh, contamination of the resin tank. <clears throat> it's been there for a while. Some small particles may be released over time and this is the result. You can start having some quality issues and if it's too difficult to see you might use it over and over and keep adding more defects to, to your models and that's the kind of thing you want to avoid if you want to really have a good quality control. <coughs> this was just a, a brief experiment I did this is a directly printed, well, it is not useful, it, it's not the material that you can actually, that you can use it for bruxism, but it does fit very well. Form Labs does sell a spe specialized material that can withstand the pressures and it is also biocompatible up to like 24 hours, something like that. So you can print it with that directly from the machine with very little uh, work needed to fit it for the occlusion. So this is another example of different materials you can use. Okay, now, this, uh, these two models were made with a very inexpensive machine that I recently uh, got. It's the Elegu Mars. Uh, it is like a, sub $300 machine and it has fantastic results. It's super inexpensive, not only the machine but also uh, the materials. It is not as reliable. It, okay, and this has to be explained. Okay, it has not failed me as much as the form labs, <coughs> but I wouldn't trust it as much as the form labs. It is, yeah, a cheap machine that can probably fail you or fail you in ways that you really cannot predict, like tolerances or accuracy. So even if it does look amazing, maybe the deviation will end up in a product that it's not usable. So this has been widely used for like small figurine or high detail parts but uh, uh, I wouldn't rely on it too much for accuracy and like dental work uh, and that's one of the evaluations I've been doing comparing the results of the form labs uh, form 2 with this machine but to be honest I think the machine does a pretty good job but like always human intervention can have a greater impact than uh, the actual quality of the machine. Just to give an example, this part, uh, this part came out very well if you followed like a clear process and optimize the printing process to make sure it will not fail. And the results were more precise than a model made with the Form Labs, Form 2, but not following a, a like a, a strict production protocol. Like, you know, like not printed on a flat surface, eh, not using the correct angle, that kind of stuff. Eh, or not placing it correctly on the thermal forming machine. That produced more unreliable results than this super inexpensive machine used correctly. So I would uh, like come to the conclusion that it's far more important training and knowing how to use your machine and choosing your materials 
than probably how much money you spend on equipment. But of course, that is the, the, the problem, okay? If you have a lot of money, very little time, and you want something that you can rely upon and don't have to learn a whole new set of skills or have to dig through a lot of the documentation, then you end up paying 10 times as much for a certified machine that can give you predictable results. But if you have the time, you're starting out, you, you want to learn, a super inexpensive machine might give you a great result, uh, better than the other ones. Okay, just to uh, show you a couple of things. Yeah, this is like your standard plaster with alginate and all the small problems that you can have. Uh, bubbles, problems with the in the, uh, imp imprint, and all the, from also from the movement of the mold, problems with the casting, the formations of the mold. So this is what it used to be. It's still used a lot today, but it's definitely something that uh, new technology is replacing because of the accuracy, uh, ease of use. Ease, ease of transportation, like you can send a file from a 3D oral scan in, in a second uh, while you would have to ship this physically to the lab. Okay, so there are huge advantages that are facing out the traditional models and bringing in other stuff. Uh, these are two things. I, I didn't uh, do this one. I've been doing similar things. This one's like a super professional a model made at a lab for uh, preparing implants and this is probably done with a, a few tens of thousands of dollars machine also empty hollow so it will save material and, and superb quality so d depending on your application like super precise uh, an accurate models might be necessary, but for for lots of applications, you might not need such accuracy, such uh, certification, such uh, reliability. You might go for uh, lower costs. Okay, so you have to make that choice. And this is the last uh, material and model I would like to show you. This was printed with a. FDM printer. This was, is with a Prusa MK3. It uses uh, uh, molten plastic to print it. So you can see some of the uh, stripes, but it's not extremely uh, different from other, even some of the uh, resin printers can leave very significant stripes because of the forces to release it from the print bed. This is not bad. I still have to try it to see the accuracy and the effectiveness of the aligners or the things that you can make with a model like this. This one was done for a course and we were trying to figure out uh, how how well it would drill and, and work. It's still a work in progress but this is also another technology that is <clears throat> expensive and it's interesting. And that's it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and like and subscribe. Goodbye.